Today's lesson is your new morning pick-me-up: mate or matcha. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike. I'm Roger, and today we're talking about alternatives to coffee or maybe tea. We're talking about some other drinks you might consider in the morning when you're trying to wake up, or if you're having something with a meal or something, you might want to check these things out. We talked about mate last time, and today we're going to talk about matcha. Yes, indeed. Now, matcha is probably a little bit more familiar to people here. It comes from Japan, and you might have had it to lots of different places. Maybe if You've been lucky enough to see that formal Japanese tea ceremony. They、uh, will use matcha in doing that, or you could be more like me and you maybe go to one of those sushi restaurants where the sushi goes around in front of you on a belt, and they'll often have this small jar along with the hot water, and you can mix your own matcha. It's basically a powdered green tea, kind of a great electric green color. I find the color of matcha very interesting, and basically you just use this powdered tea and you mix it in with the Water and there you get a nice cup of sort of Japanese style green tea. And in fact, the flavor is so popular that now they have matcha cookies, matcha chocolates, matcha ice cream. A lot of people like this flavor. It's sort of gone beyond tea in the same way that we make coffee flavored candies and coffee flavored ice cream. Matcha got its own fan base who just love the flavor of matcha, whether they're getting it in a tea or in another matcha flavored snack. So we're going to find out about matcha and also some of the interesting. Health benefits that it brings with it, things that even if you are a fan of matcha, you might not know about. So this should be very, very interesting, and also good news for people who are looking for alternatives for traditional coffee and tea and things like that. So let's find out all about matcha. Matcha is a special type of green tea that originated in East Asia and is today most commonly produced in Japan. To make matcha. Farmers shield their tea plants from direct sunlight, causing them to turn an intense green color. After being harvested, the leaves are dried and processed into a fine powder. Hello, everyone. The first part of the word "shield" means shield, shield, but it can also mean protect or protect. For example, submarines have pressurized hulls to shield the crew from the effects of sea pressure. 为了保护船员不受海中压力的影响，潜水艇将舱内加压。或者 ，The hat shielded Michael's pale skin from the sun. 帽子保护 Michael 苍白的皮肤，不晒到太阳。Okay, the first paragraph tells us what matcha is. It's a special type of green tea that originated in East Asia and is today most commonly produced in Japan. Now, of course, we've all heard that green tea is really good for you, and there are all sorts of different kinds of green tea. I've tried to ask around here in Taiwan where I can get green tea, and somebody at a tea shop said, "Well, we just don't really drink green tea here in Taiwan. We like our oolong the best, but." In any case, here we're talking about matcha, and that's a special type of green tea, and it came from East Asia, and it's mainly produced in Japan. So, yet when we think of green tea or when we think of matcha, we tend to think of the land of the rising sun, Japan. Absolutely, which is why it's so common to find it in sushi restaurants and places like that. Now, how do you make this stuff? That's a great question. It says to make matcha, farmers shield their tea plants from direct sunlight. Causing them to turn an intense green color. Well, there's one mystery solved. Why does it have that intense, that powerful, that very interesting and unique green color? I bet you somewhere there's a matcha green you can buy as a paint if you want to turn your whole bedroom into a matcha colored space. But yeah, it is a very intense or powerful green color. Well, how do they get it? Well, it's actually a physical process. You would think maybe there's adding food coloring to things, and possibly they do when they're producing matcha. Industrially in a factory, but traditionally you shield the tea plants from direct sunlight. So basically, they put kind of a, an umbrella or something over the tea plants as they're growing. They're shielding them from the sun in the same way that an umbrella can shield you from the rain. Holding a blanket or a newspaper over your head might shield your hair from being wet if you have to dash through a rainstorm. And when we wear clothes, we're shielding our body from the cold by wearing a winter jacket or something like that. So basically. 
basically you're covering something. You're blocking the sunlight from shining directly onto the tea plants. They're not grown in a black box indoor with no sunlight. Of course, they probably wouldn't grow in that case. But they don't want them to get that direct, powerful, hot sunlight. So they basically probably put some kind of cover over them to block the sun, and that is what actually causes them to turn this intense green color. Right. I think、uh, most of the tea here in Taiwan is not shielded from the sun.、Mm. I've seen lots of tea plantations in the mountains, and they're certainly in the open air there, and they're going to be exposed to the sunlight. But I guess if you want to make matcha, you need to shield that tea or those tea plants from that direct sunlight, and then they turn that intense green color. And after being harvested, the leaves are dried and processed into a fine powder. So again, as Mike said, if you go to a sushi restaurant. Or those revolving sushi restaurants, or whatever, then you can see the fine powder there, and that's green tea, and that is indeed quite tasty. And matcha is a kind of green tea, which we'll talk about now in the next paragraph. So let's listen, and then we'll be right back to discuss it. When preparing the tea traditionally, matcha powder is first added to hot water or milk. The mixture is then whisked aggressively with a special bamboo brush, resulting in a light, creamy drink. The drink's complex flavor profile tends to include fragrant, grassy notes with hints of sweetness. Matcha is known for its abundance of health-giving minerals and antioxidants. It contains essential components such as L-theanine, renowned for its stress-reducing properties, and catechins, powerful antioxidants that help prevent cancer. Additionally, matcha contains caffeine, making it an excellent choice for boosting energy levels in the morning. Its level of caffeine is relatively low, though. Second part, we see aggressively. This word is a verb, meaning aggressive or aggressive. It can be aggressive. For example, the salesman aggressively tried to sell his product. 那名销售员大力推销他的产品，或是 the dog barked aggressively at the mailman. 那只狗对着邮差挑衅的吠叫。接着看到形容词 fragrant， 它的意思是芳香的或是芬芳的。例如 ，My garden contains a bed of fragrant roses. 我的花园里有一大片芳香的玫瑰花。也可以说 ，The scent of fragrant foods filled the outdoor market. 露天市场都是香味四溢的食物味道。再来介绍名词 abundance， 表示大量、充足或是丰富。我们可以说 ，wild animals are found in abundance in this nature park。这个自然公园里发现了大量的野生动物。又或者说 ，this region of the country produces an abundance of rice。该国的这个地区盛产稻米。下一个看到名词 mineral， 它的意思是人体所需的矿物质，也可以是矿物的意思。例如。This water is good to drink as it contains lots of minerals. 这水适合饮用，因为它含有许多矿物质。又或者说 ，The valley is rich in minerals, so many companies have set up mines there. 这座山谷矿产丰富，因此许多公司都在那里搭建了矿井。再来，我们看到 component 这个单字，它是名词，指的是组成部分、要素，也可以是零件的意思。举例来说。Trust is a crucial component in a successful partnership. 信任是成功合作关系中的关键要素。又或者说 ，If one component is broken, the entire device won't work. 如果一个零件故障，整个设备就无法运作。最后看到形容词 renowned， 它表示著名的或是有声望的。我们可以说 ，The renowned author's novels have been translated into dozens of languages. 这位知名作家的小说已被翻译成数十种语言。也可以说 ，A renowned scientist will give a speech at the university. 一位知名科学家将在那所大学演讲。Okay, so when preparing the tea traditionally, matcha powder is first added to hot water 
or milk. Okay, so you've got the tea processed into a fine powder. It's ground down into a fine green powder. So you want to make your tea. So traditionally, what you do is you add that powder to hot water, or you add it to milk. I think that water needs to be a very specific temperature. I've never heard of adding milk to it, but I suppose you could do that. In any case, here you add those things to the tea, and the mixture is then whisked aggressively with a special bamboo brush, resulting in a light, creamy drink. I actually saw that happening once. There was an activity like a Japan celebration at City Hall many years ago, and they had a tea ceremony there where you could try this. And indeed, they had these special bamboo brushes in which they whisked the tea aggressively. Now, if you whisk something, you move something quickly in a bowl or something like that, and you're trying to mix something together, but at the same time, you're trying to make it kind of puffy or with a lot of suds. Or bubbles. Yeah, it's very interesting. The the little brushes actually look like、uh, shaving brushes that people used to use. You know, when they're putting soap on their face to shave. But of course, this is made of very thin bamboo or something like that. And the whole thing, not just the brush part, but the handle, it all looks very lovely. And yeah, it's a good souvenir too. If you like matcha, you can go to Japan and pick up one of these little kits where you can make your own tea to create this light, creamy drink that, of course, is made creamier and lighter by whisking all that. Air into the matcha water mixture. The drink's complex flavor profile tends to include fragrant grassy notes with hints of sweetness. It really is a very unique flavor. Once you've tried matcha, you get this very powerful sort of green tea flavor with those interesting hints of sweetness. And this all explains why it's become such a popular flavor on its own. As we said, there are chocolate bars and ice creams and stuff that have matcha flavor. I'm sure you can get yourself a matcha flavored birthday cake if you really. Want to? So it tends to include. It usually includes. When something tends to, we're saying it usually does. In most cases, it does, but not always. So it tends to include fragrant grassy notes. All right. So a grassy note. When we talk about a note here, it's not a note like I'm going to write you a note about some important information or a musical note. It's basically something you would notice in a flavor. So when you see those wine people drinking wine and saying, "Oh, I'm tasting dark cherries and I'm tasting leather and." Wood or tobacco or something—they're not actually tasting those things in the wine that they're drinking. The wine is made of grapes, but they're tasting or smelling or sensing or picking up hints of those flavors, little bits of those flavors. It reminds you of those flavors, and the notes that you pick up from the glass of wine could be a little bit different from the notes that I pick up. Of course, our tongues, mouths, and noses—the things that we use to taste—are different, but that's basically one of the little elements of this. Whole flavor that we're talking about. So it's something that you would notice in the flavor. It could be powerful, it could be subtle, and it could depend on the sensitivity of the person doing the tasting. In the case of fragrant, when we hear fragrant, yeah, we often think of growing things like plants and flowers, grass, things like that. Those types of flavors, those types of smells. When they're being described as fragrant, we're often thinking of plants and whatnot. Perfumes, of course, would be a very natural thing to consider as being rather fragrant. But also certain types of natural foods that we have, as well as actually tasting flowers, because sometimes they use flower notes or flower flavors in foods, and also hints of sweetness. Sweetness not created by the addition of sugar, just natural sweetness in the matcha to make it quite different from tea, which often is a little bit bitter. But might not have those sweet notes that matcha carries. Right, and fragrant, of course, is a good smell, whereas a bad smell、mm. would be rancid or something like that. So here we've got fragrant, grassy notes. It smells good. It's wonderful. You can't wait to drink it. And here in the next paragraph, it says matcha is known for its abundance of health-giving minerals and antioxidants. Okay, so if you have an abundance of something, you have a lot of that thing. Abundance here is a noun. Abundant is the adjective. There are abundant restaurants in Taipei where you can go get a decent meal. There are a lot of them, but here we've got an abundance of health-giving minerals. Minerals, of course, are things you. 
you get out of the ground that are good for your health, like iron or copper or various things like that. And of course, we need them in our diet. And it's also got these things called antioxidants, which I think、uh, involve vitamin C and vitamin E and things like that. They sort of get rid of those free radicals in your system. Yeah, absolutely. Some people, as we've mentioned earlier, believe they can help prevent cancer and generally give you good health. It contains essential components such as L-theanine, renowned for its stress-reducing properties, and catechins, powerful antioxidants that help prevent cancer. So there we go. These are some of the chemicals that you'll find in there. They're healthful and healthy chemicals. Essential components. Something that's essential is very, very important. It's absolutely necessary. Without that, you cannot have a certain situation、uh, exist. Something can't happen. So if it's essential, it's absolutely important. And a component. Well, it's kind of like a part of something. When we're talking about the things that make up or elements that might make up a greater idea or a bigger whole, we're talking about the components. So the components of a good party would be an interesting location, great music, lots of people, good food and drink, you know, and have all of these parts there, have all of these elements or components there, and your good party, the good time is basically guaranteed. So essential components, some of the most important chemicals, at least from a health point of view, that you find in matcha. L-theanine. This chemical is renowned. Apparently, it's famous. It's well known for its stress-reducing properties. So, if you've ever been to one of those health food stores, you might find them selling this in pill form. And if you're a type of nervous person, not because you've been drinking too much coffee, but just a naturally nervous person, you might take L-theanine because apparently it's famous or well renowned for its stress-reducing properties. It reduces levels of stress. It takes a nervous, stressed-out, worried person. And turns them into a much happier, more peaceful, more relaxed person. That sounds pretty good. And one other essential component they mention here are catechins. What are those powerful antioxidants that help prevent cancer? So we talked about had matcha had antioxidants. Now we're telling you exactly which antioxidant, because I'm sure there are many found out there in nature. Catechins is the type of antioxidant, and as we mentioned, these can help prevent cancer. That's good. Okay, of course they probably won't stop it. Completely, but it might reduce your chances of getting cancer. And additionally, or in addition, we could say matcha contains caffeine, making it an excellent choice for boosting energy levels in the morning. And its level of caffeine is relatively low, though. So yes, we're talking about some alternatives to coffee. Maybe coffee has too much caffeine. Here are some different choices: mate and matcha. These do contain caffeine, but at a lower level, a lower level than coffee. Okay, that's the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's move on now to the third part and wrap things up. In spite of their small differences, matcha makes an excellent substitute for coffee. It offers a healthy, refreshing way to start the day without any of coffee's negative side effects. Okay, here in the third part of our lesson today, it says, in spite of their small differences, matcha makes an excellent substitute. For coffee. So again, we're summarizing everything. We're talking about matcha and mate, but here we're focusing on matcha, and it makes an excellent substitute for coffee. Now, a substitute is something that takes the place of something else. Now, most of us might be addicted to coffee. We are so used to getting up in the morning and having a cup of coffee. Mike, do you start your day with a cup of coffee? I do not, because I just don't want to waste the time making a cup in the morning.、Oh. I usually have mine in the afternoon. Okay, well, I don't really need coffee that much. Maybe some people are getting a little nervous, a little jittery from having too much coffee, and they have that energy crash in the afternoon. So here, matcha makes an excellent substitute for coffee. It's something you can have instead of coffee. Yes, and I've actually been reading some articles recently, more and more news articles saying that morning cup of coffee may not be the best idea to get your energy level all the way through the day. So I think this is the same type of thing we're talking about. Here and the nice thing is we're offering you some alternatives, so that's pretty good. It offers a healthy, refreshing way to start the day without any of coffee's negative side effects. Here we're talking about matcha. I'm sure a lot of the same could be said about mate as well, which we looked at yesterday. But here specifically, matcha is a healthy, refreshing way to start the day. Something refreshing. Well.
Well, it could be like caffeine. It kind of gives you some new energy, freshens you up, right? So when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling a little bit run down, a little bit slow, your brain is not working as well as it did a few hours ago in the morning. This is refreshing. Other things that could be refreshing, if you're feeling the same way, go outside and walk around the block. Maybe splash some water on your face. Maybe close your eyes and listen to some relaxing music for just 20 minutes or something. You'll find that after you do these things, it's kind of like you've had that cup of coffee. You're feeling a bit of energy. You're feeling a little bit more get up and go than you did before. But you won't have the nervousness and the rapid heartbeat or whatever that coffee might bring to some people. So refreshing in a healthier way without all of the negative side effects of too much caffeine because side effects are bad effects that come from something we are doing. You might be taking a certain medicine that helps you in many ways. It helps treat certain physical problems or health problems that you're having, but the side effects might be, I like the medicine and you know it's cleared up my skin problem or whatever it is, but I feel tired when I take it. I feel nervous when I take it. I have an upset stomach when I take it. Generally, when we talk about side effects, they are, as it says, they're negative. They could also be positive, right? You can have a positive side effect, but it's not the main goal that you're going for. It's not the main reason you're taking this medicine or doing this thing. It's a sort of side benefit or a side reason, or maybe it's something on the side that is not so good. And in the case of both of these drinks, it sounds like they have a lot of good with not too much bad, so not too many negative side effects. Okay, everybody, it's time to hear from Hanny, and then we'll be back with a discussion starter. Hello,我是Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第二部分提到，以传统方式被查实，首先会将抹茶粉加入热水或牛奶中，接着用特殊的竹刷用力搅拌混合物。那文中是用副词aggressively来表达用力地
aggressively. The painter aggressively scrubbed the dirty marks on the wall. Mineral. Iron is one of the important minerals found in healthy vegetables like spinach and cabbage. Essential. Good communication is essential for a successful team project. Component. Effective time management is a key component of academic success. Substitute. If we don't have regular milk, almond milk would be a suitable substitute. Discussion starter starts now! Here's our discussion starter for today. The question is, do you think that you would prefer mate over matcha? Why or why not? Well, I think I might like mate better than matcha simply because I'm a little tired of matcha. I mean, it's good. I like it, but I've had it many times, so I'm in the mood for something a little different. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that I would prefer matcha over mate considering that it uses those bamboo brushes to mix them up. Those brushes are just so cool and the process of kind of whisking it around in the bowl is so gratifying. I can't imagine drinking anything else. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.